Okay, let's uh, let's get started then. Um, thank you all for taking the time to attend the Plant Products webinar today. Um, I understand the weather's been uh, really well, uh, really good, uh, certainly where I'm sitting today and over the past weekend. So you guys are all chomping at the bit to get on the golf course and uh, get it prepared and, and get ahead of the game. So again, thanks for your time uh, during this busy period for you guys. My name is Jason Ireton. I'm the Ontario Turf Sales Manager. With me today is Mike Sturrock, our Quebec Sales Manager, Kelly DeVera, our Product and Marketing Manager, and of course the draw for today is uh, Kyle Miller, the Senior Technical Specialist from BSF. Um, both our Ontario and Quebec te uh, sales team are on the call. Um, so any questions or any uh, anything you have uh, post webinar, uh, feel free to reach out to your reps and ask the questions, um, and we're happy to help. Uh, customers with questions uh, from the Maritimes, please note Halifax Seed is our partner, and you can reach out to Callum and Ryan for the great support that they provide as well. Um, on the call with us today, we have Brad Hayhoe, uh, Marketing Manager, Professional Specialty and Global Key Accounts. Um, that's a big title, but uh, Brad's been uh, doing this a long time. So uh, <laughs> Brad is the uh, the go-to um, in who plant products work with to bring the products to market. Um, probably what I'm most excited about is the addition that uh, Brad has to the team this year, and, and that is um, BSF has hired Chris LaCour. I'm sure many of you know who he is and what he brings to the table, but uh, our team and, and uh, BSF are really excited to have him. So uh, Chris is on the call today, um, and I'm sure he'll be making his rounds to support the brands and uh, promote the programs. Uh, Chris, I guess if you want to introduce yourself, say hi. That'd be great. No, thanks for the, for the intro, Jason. And yeah, I'm chomping at the bit with this nice weather to get out and see everybody. So hopefully very soon we'll, we'll start hitting the road. Great. Uh, agenda today for uh, this hour. Um, obviously, uh, we have Kyle Miller to discuss Maxtima, uh, the label expansion that we're excited about, and the newest chem uh, chemical tool uh, from BSF for 2021 uh, exemplar. Uh, I'm going to review the Infinity program. I'm really excited uh, about this new opportunity for everyone to save some money and um, uh, bundle up the products now that the toolbox is certainly a lot uh, more in it and uh, show you how you can save some money in your budgets this year. And then to finish off, uh, Mike Sturrock is going to talk about Pure Coat, uh, the newest controlled release fertilizer uh, produced by Purcell. And we're really in our second full year of selling it. Uh, so we're, we're really happy with the uh, strides we've made there. And we want to uh, provide you some technical support on that as well. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, Kelly and our team uh, will watch uh, for questions. Uh, we'll read them out if we can interrupt or we'll hold them until the end and we'll make sure that all the questions asked today are answered. And then again, if you have anything after the call and you forget, um, feel free to reach out to your rep and, and we'll certainly get you the information you require. So without for, further ado, I guess, uh, first up, Kyle Miller to uh, present us uh, the BSF and Max Dima and Zumpler. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, thanks guys, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I've got a few things I wanna talk about today. I'm gonna to be a little bit, I guess, all over the board, if you will. Um, one of the things I just wanted to mention real quick was just a little bit about our, our pipeline. Uh, here's one that you might have questions on. You've got all the frozen product in your chemical storage, what in the world do you do? And then uh, as was stated, talk about Exemplar and Max Tima, a little bit about Honor, and uh, then how to sort of incorporate all these products into a spray program. So uh, with that, uh, I just wanna mention the pipeline, and even though uh, these are US introductions this year, my point about this is we continue to discover new compounds. Uh, we continue to be very interested in obtaining uh, new products, new compounds through third parties. So we're always looking, uh, our pipeline continues to be very robust. Uh, these are just some of the ones that uh, we're gonna be introducing into the US market uh, this year. So for example, in Cardis, you all are, that's Emerald Chlorothalonil or uh, Cadence in Chlorothalonil, one of the products that we're looking at there. So anyway, um, however, 
I did want to talk about this because this has sort of been a popular subject here recently, and that is going into your chemical storage room and finding uh, material that's been around a while. What do I do? Or if something froze, you know, can I actually use it? Yes or no? Uh, this particular situation here, um, this was some product that sat outside at uh, zero, well, I think about minus five centigrade for a week, and that's what happened to it. This is one of our products. It's a flowable or a suspension concentrate product, and obviously that product there is compromised. Um, you know, what do I do in a situation like that? And, and, and many times you can't do a whole lot. But what I wanted to share with you is understand this. If you have product that has frozen and understand too that for example water freezes at zero degrees uh, celsius uh, a solid material like a wdg or a dg product that really doesn't have a freezing point okay so we don't have to worry about that too much or these ec products like a lot a lot of our broadleaf weed products um, they have naphthalene in there they freeze at a very low freezing point. The ones that we worry about are these more of these milkshake type products, a flowable, a suspension concentrate, uh, because of, those are just suspended material in a formulation, a lot of times water-based. Those are the ones that you really need to be concerned about. So if temperatures have hovered right around freezing for your chemical storage, probably not an issue. Um, one thing is that our, our people tell us, our formulations people, try to use up product within a couple years, two or three years. That, that's what we call normal shelf life. That doesn't mean it's not good after that. However, uh, I think just be cognizant of it. Try to rotate your inventory so that you're using older stuff first, okay? Another thing is old product. The active ingredient drops off very little over time. And here's another thing. We over-formulate these formulations that we have. And so we're actually putting the uh, percentage that's on the label or slightly above to make sure that we meet or exceed what that label says. So like I said, even if it's a few years old, it still probably has the exact amount of active ingredient in there that's on the, the label. And as you well know, we optimize these for formulations with surfactants, buffering agents, algicides, stabilizers, all, all, all sorts of things. So like I said, be concerned about those SCs or flowable products. Those are the ones that you need to uh, be concerned about. Simply, if you've had something compromised, do a jar test. Make sure that it can mix with water. And I suggest, don't try to tank mix it with something. Give it the best possible chance to work properly, okay? So uh, tank mixing is not suggested. If you do have, you know, some, some product that you, you feel maybe is compromised, understand very expensive to dispose of product so my suggestion is find a way to get it into uh, your spray tank mix it well and spray it out and remember too products even older products they don't go bad like produce or like milk in your refrigerator it they are still good for your plants so anyway i thought i'd, I'd share that with you in case some of you have had some issues this winter or think about things like this and are wondering what in the world do I do? And then probably the last thing is, if you do have some old product, we can figure out how old it is uh, by the lot numbers that are on that particular product. So anyway, hope that helps a little bit. All right, let's, let's talk about exemplar. Let's talk about these fungicides. That's what we're here for. Uh, exemplar has been our lead product for a number of years here in the U.S. I am glad that you all have access to Exemplar. 
it is the top performing dollar spot material in the marketplace today here in the U.S. Uh, and the reason is it does a lot of, lot of things. It lasts a long time, up to 28 days. It is very efficacious. It works very, very well. And also, if you have a little bit of dollar spot present, it will control it curatively. And I'll show you a few slides here in a minute. So, uh, and it fits really well into your spray, your, your yearly spray program. It fits in very, very nicely. Uh, it also picks up other diseases too. Dollar spot obviously being its real strength. So, like I was talking about these suspension concentrates, Exemplar is one of these suspension concentrates. I think, I think you see some of the uh, particulars on this uh, product here. And like I said, you can adjust the rate to get the length of control that you're after. Uh, the very lowest rate is for 14 days control, and we can go all the way up to 28 days of control. So very effective on dollar spot. And I know that Dr. Rick Latin, uh, emeritus professor from Purdue, Purdue has spoken uh, in Canada many, many times in the past. And this is one of the charts that he put together uh, on dollar spot products and, and uh, some of the most effective ones. Exemplar, as you well know, is an SDHI, and in that category, he ranks it as the number one product. Uh, we also have Cadence, which has been around for quite some time, uh, and that is also an SDHI that's very, very solid. So we've got two great dollar spot products to integrate into your spray program. I'm going to talk a little bit about Maxima here shortly. And as you can see, in its short lifespan in the marketplace, it is already at the top of the list for dollar spot control um, with regard to efficacy, with regard to length of control, uh, another very effective dollar spot product. Here is just a slide that shows pressure, dollar spot pressure. And what we basically did here was we made two applications to this fairway. And the last treatment on June 20th, we just let it run out to see how long it would last. You can see there's a little bit of dollar spot coming in there already, but we sometimes are able to get more than 28 days of control. Uh, I'm one of these uh, folks that are a proponent of staying on a, a good, strong, tight schedule. But just to demonstrate the length of residual, uh, we let this one run out to show you how long it potentially can last. So excellent residual from Exemplar. Here is just some, some data to back up exactly what I'm saying. And I cover the entire northern U.S., which is more similar to where you all are. So I go up into New England and Michigan and Wisconsin, et cetera. And I get to, to uh, visit a lot of universities, look, look at products and field days at a lot of universities. And the bottom line is, Exemplar has become the standard with which uh, university researchers compare new products because it's that good. And in this particular trial, 21-day, 28-day spray interval still gave excellent results. Uh, no different than, than you see here, too, in that because it's so effective at controlling dollar spot that you've got really high quality turf. So uh, exemplar, great choice uh, in your program. This happened to be just a couple of years ago at the Purdue Field Day when Rick Latin was still there. Uh, I took these pictures 
Uh, here's Exemplar, given stellar results on a 21-day spray interval. Those plots were still clean as a whistle. You can see the kind of pressure that we were under over there to the right. Uh, lots of pressure, and it gave really good results. And then these were just some of the competitive products that were in the trial, and uh, I think it's pretty obvious to you that they weren't able to perform at the level uh, that uh, Exemplar did. This happened to be Maxtima, and I'll talk about that here very shortly. Uh, here's Posterity, also given some very good results, Ballista, and Dacanil Action. So Exemplar, very strong on dollar spot preventatively. That, that's when those uh, products were put out. And then also the nice thing about Exemplar is, is that if you have any dollar spot present, it will stop it in its tracks. Do I like for superintendents to use it after they have pressure? No. However, it will give some reach back and be able to control that dollar spot. And I think in this picture, it's pretty obvious that within about less than two weeks, we had pretty much cleaned up uh, those plots. It had recovered and the turf looked, quote, back to normal, if you will. Here's another one where you see just four days after the application, look at how much reduction in dollar spot we saw just in four days. Uh, pretty significant. Emerald or premise, uh, I mean, cadence, not quite as good. Uh, Exemplar definitely has very strong uh, curative activities. And then this graph is just simply showing what happens over time as uh, the, the dollar spot begins to fall off. And within about day seven, you're back to having some pretty good looking turf. Here we were comparing it to emerald and also chlorothalonil. With regard to curative activity, uh, we had done a bunch of work at the University of Connecticut, and just four days after the application, you're looking at some plots, and you can see all that white mycelium in these plots. Here is Vallista, very little effect on the mycelium uh, at two different rates. Here is Cadence, slowed it down a little bit, but that's definitely not a strength for Cadence. We like using it early in the season before we get pressure, and then late in the season as we're putting that turf to bed. That seems to be the best time to use that particular product. Hyperdion, giving some curative activity. Weather sticks, still a lot of mycelium uh, in those plots. Secure, pretty solid contact uh, that we use a lot of times to stop dollar spot. But look at the exemplar. I think it's pretty obvious to you. We had stopped all of that white mycelium and the turf was already beginning uh, to recover. So very strong product uh, with regard to preventative and curative dollar spot control. So uh, I think Exemplar has proven that it is the top dollar spot product in the marketplace. It does pick up on patch diseases like take all patch, summer patch, brown patch, um, and uh, snow mold. So it's got other diseases that it's effective on. Obviously, uh, its real strength happens to be dollar spot control. Any questions, guys, uh, up to this point? Because I want to talk a little bit about Maxima. All right, just checking. So Maxima, we launched in 2019, in the summer of 2019. Uh, you all are aware that this is a sterol inhibitor, a DMI, um, and one that uh, 
has shown just some real effective results uh, because we feel like we can use it any temperature, any turf, any time of the year, anywhere on your golf course. And older DMIs or SIs, as we call them, we haven't been able to do that. So this one sort of sets itself apart, and it's very good on a number of different diseases. It is really good on dollar spot. It, one of the strengths that it also has is it is very good on anthracnose, which during the summer months can uh, pose a problem. Also, snow mold and some patch diseases like take all patch, Watea patch, and uh, um, summer patch. Very strong residual. We can also get up to 28 days of control with this product. And most importantly, like I said, no issues with turf safety. And with two SDHIs that we have with um, uh, cadence and exemplar, this one sort of balances things out very, very nicely. It being a DMI and one that uh, we can incorporate uh, very nicely into your spray program. Okay, here's what's happened with Maxtima. When we introduced it in Canada, uh, which is the before, if you will, we were restricted on some of the rates, and the ones that are asterisk are the ones that have changed. So for anthracnose, we now have our full anthracnose rate on the label. Dollar spot. We've also got our full dollar spot rate, which allows us to go out to 28 days. Fairy ring was not on the label previously, so that one's new. And we were able to get the recommended rate for fairy ring on that label. And then also the same with summer patch. Both of those diseases take the full labeled rate uh, to be effective. So. Four diseases that we've seen uh, a change with, uh, some increased rates, and also additions of uh, uh, berry ring and summer patch to the label. So we're pretty excited about the opportunity there. As I mentioned, very good on dollar spot, just like exemplar. I showed this slide uh, just a little bit ago. This was 21. Uh, 23 days after the second application, and they were on a 21-day spray interval on this bent grass fairway. Uh, you can see it just starting to break, but very, very severe pressure here. Uh, so that that's somewhat warranted. And then some of the other uh, products that we were talking about earlier and, and their level of control that they were able to deliver on, on uh, Dollar Spot. But Max Tima, very solid. The other nice thing about Maxtima, just like Exemplar, is it has reach back. So if you have a little bit of dollar spot present, it will control dollar spot that's already there. The turf will recover, and you'll, and you'll still get the kind of residual that you're looking for. So that is a real positive. Not all products do that. Obviously, our contact materials are, are, are most well known for that, but it's nice when you have other products that really are effective curatively because so many of the times, you know, that happens uh, to us where we get behind the eight ball just a little bit and we want to control uh, dollar spot curatively. Anyone that has DMI insensitive dollar spot. We have done a tremendous amount of work on that. And th this uh, graph here or chart is a little bit confusing, but here's what you need to know. Revisol is Maxtima, so that's the left column. We had numerous strains, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All of the strains that we evaluated that were DMI insensitive, we got 
very effective control from the Maxima, the left column. The other DMIs that we were looking at, not so much. This ha actually happened to be for Septoria, but we still see the same kind of trend with Dollar Spot. Those materials are a little bit all over the board, whereas Maxima has been very solid. My suggestion to anybody that you feel like has DMI insensitive dollar spot is incorporate it into your program. Full rate, dollar spot rate, short interval to get the best results and minimize the number of times that you use it in a year to give it the very best chance to work. So that's how I, I suggest going after um, DMI insensitive dollar spot. The other nice thing about this product is we do not worry about any discoloration if we use it in the middle of the summer and it is very hot. Um, we have not seen anything with this particular product. So this past year, 2020 in the US, was our first full year for Max Tima. I had maybe two or three situations where maybe the length of control wasn't quite what the superintendent expected, but we had many superintendents use it with excellent results, and that's fairly normal. However, the, the more encouraging thing was I had absolutely no one that came to me and said, hey, I used it in the middle of the summer and I saw that grain, that you know, darkening of the turf like I see with other DMIs. Did not happen. The turf looked exactly like you'd expect it to look, even if the turf was in a, a PGR program. And this happened to be at a Maxima rate that's very, very high over that plot on the right. So excellent turf safety. I had mentioned anthracnose control, and this has just been a, 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 a great thing for this product because we can use it during the summer when we have anthracnose problems. And in the 2020 Chemical Control of Turf Grass Diseases, that report, you can see Maxtima was a four of four efficacy-wise compared to some of the other DMIs or, or SIs or sterile inhibitors that you see there. So very consistent on anthracnose, which is a really important disease during the summer months. Dr. Bruce Clark at Rutgers has done a tremendous amount of work with Maxtima um, on anthracnose. He's been our lead, if you will. And if you look over here uh, on this chart, you can see very good control with Maxtima uh, at all the rates that were tested. So uh, very encouraged with everything that we've seen. And um, like I said, I didn't, this year, I did not have any superintendent that came back to me and said, hey, I didn't get the kind of anthracnose control that I was expecting. Uh, did not hear that. So uh, very positive from that standpoint. So that's sort of a little bit of background on Maxtima, how things went this year, uh, what its strengths are. Um, I just want to mention Honor. Honor continues to be a very effective fungicide for us, two modes of action. Obviously, you have the insignia component and the cadence component in there, okay? Um, very good on dollar spot and 26 other diseases. So very broad spectrum from that standpoint. Honor, we really like to use it middle of the summer when your turf is stressed, okay? That is what we call our holiday sprays because that is when you get the greatest bang for your buck with honor. 
because it's got plant health benefits that it can bring to the party. And we'll, we'll chat about that just for a second. Um, that really can help with your putting greens or even your fairways because we see it used in both uh, situations many times. One of the other areas that we've been using honor has been around bunker banks. Tough place to grow grass, as you well know. The grass will thin out there. It dries out there most quickly. And this is a great fit because of the plant health benefits that we get from honor because of that insignia or pyroclostrobin component that's in that particular product. And I do want to just mention real quick about this plant health. Uh, we call these products intrinsic products. And basically what that means is they have insignia in them or pyroclostrobin, which gives rise to the plant health that we see. So that would be in, uh, Honor and Insignia Duo for you because both those products have insignia in them. In a nutshell, here is how to easily understand what is going on with this plant health. Simply, when you spray the turf with a insignia-based product like Honor or Insignia Duo, what it does is it slows down respiration in that plant, and that extra energy gets funneled or redirected to the root system. And so we've got a healthier, more efficient plant that can, quote, ward off uh, stresses that we see all times of the year. And so in a nutshell, that's what this means. That's what, that's what these compounds are doing to the turf grass plant in a nutshell. One of the things that we see, for example, this is turf, bent grass turf and flats grown at very high temperatures. When we sprayed them, well, the middle one with honor, we were able to reduce canopy temperatures significantly with honor compared to not being treated. And what we feel like is going on is the root system is improved. It can explore more moisture, and it's also protecting that plant because there are some other physiological things that are going on. Slowing down that respiration also helps. It's like a marathon runner compared to a sprinter. As I mentioned, it's all about roots. And what we have seen is when we treat, this happened to be sod that was treated with an insignia-based product. The one on the, the plug on the left was not. The one at the middle, okay, was treated with insignia-based product the day we laid it. Look at all those roots. The one on the right with roots coming out of the bottom was treated at the side farm and then also when we laid it. And that one was the one that showed the most dramatic improvement in rooting. So if you are doing a sodding pro project, not only can we deliver really good uh, disease control, but we can also help with the establishment of that turf. That turf on the right took a lot less time to heal in on, on that fairway that was being resodded uh, one, one summer a few years ago. It's all about roots. Lexicon, which you see there in the middle, is an insignia-based product, and we just see enhanced rooting because of that. Shade studies. We've done a number of shade studies with insignia-based products like Honor, and here's what happens. Turf grown in the shade will go downhill during the summer months. Look over, the, that's the plot on the left. Look at the plot on the right. Stronger root system, 
slowing down respiration, better, better playing surface. We lost a lot less turf. In fact, this turf looks similar to when the study started and the shade was applied to those plots. So excellent shade tolerance by using these uh, intrinsic products or insignia-based products. If you're airifying, I suggest, and Lexicon is one of those insignia-based products, I suggest treat with a product like Honor just prior to airification because here's what you'll see. Here we are three days later, seven days later. We see faster recovery of the turf when we apply a product like Honor to that turf grass just prior to aerification. It improves the rooting and you get better coverage up top too. So that's a little background on plant health with our products. And I'm gonna finish uh, now with, with Cadence and uh, mention this Insignia Duo, but this continues to be a solid dollar spot product for you all. Uh, it is in the US also. It's still delivering up to 28 days of control with a single application. And like I mentioned, we really like it, that fourth bullet point, early season and late season. So wake up your turf with an application of cadence to keep it clean starting the season and then put it to bed clean as a whistle so that you don't have any lesions that you're looking at all winter long. So excellent uh, product to use those times of the year. Here is just some, some research data to show exactly that. This is basically showing you that over time, over an entire season, we had very little dollar spot in the cadence plots, in the exemplar plots uh, in this particular trial that was at the University of Maryland a few years ago. And at all spray intervals there, up to 28 days. So very effective dollar spot control. And then finally, Insignia Duo. As you know, the two components here are our foundation for snow mold control. Even here in the northern states in the U.S., it's been uh, what we tank mix other products with if we need to. Uh, very effective snow mold control, both gray and pink snow mold, um, has been around for quite some time and just gives really solid control of snow mold. And then I just want to finish out with, okay, we, we've got all these products now. How do we incorporate this into a year-long spray program? On the left there, you see my suggestion or our suggestion on how to work in Maxima, in Exemplar, in Honor, uh, on your green surfaces, okay? That Honor application, as I mentioned, makes the most sense during the summer, what we call here in the U.S. these holiday sprays because of the 4th of July, for example, Labor Day, Memorial Day. Uh, work it in during the summer because that's when it's going to give you the greatest bang for your buck. And then balance that out with Max Team and Exemplar uh, uh, applications and then Insignia Duo in the fall of the year. Tees and fairways, start off with Cadence, end with Cadence, and then work in our Max Tima and Exemplar uh, in the middle there uh, to give you just some stellar dollar spot control and pick up on anthracnose and some patch diseases. And then finally, in the fall of the year, Insignia Duo. So that's basically what I have for you all. Uh, welcome any questions that you might have, any specific things that uh, you might want me to elaborate on. But 
like I said, I think you've got a, a great stable of BASF products now to work with, and hopefully I give you, gave you a little insight into how to position them during the year. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, I don't see any questions right now in the uh, chat. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, we're happy to review them as they come in if, if you're typing or think of something while we're moving along here. Um, we'll make sure that they're uh, answered during the presentation. Sure. Okay. Um, a couple notes uh, from your presentation. Um, one I should have mentioned earlier, but uh, I just want to let everybody know this presentation is being recorded, so we can uh, have access to this later on if, if you'd like to see it again or, or move it to somebody else. Um, and also on the exemplar label, um, in, in Canada we only have dollar spots, so I just want to make mention of that, but uh, very excited to have it, and uh, it's going to be a great tool as uh, uh, Kyle presented here earlier. Great. Okay, uh, next up, I just, I wanted to talk about the Infinity program. Uh, I'm excited to introduce this program. Our team is for sure. Um, this is new um, for the uh, market and uh, pretty self-explanatory, but uh, a few things to note. Um, with the growing lineup from BISF and the great products such as Maxtima and Honor and Insignia Duo, uh, certainly the proven products like Cadence Premise and now the newest uh, chemistry and exemplar, uh, there's a nice basket of goods here to help you uh, achieve some of these levels. So BSF's pr uh, put together this program that we're going to roll out called the Infinity Program um, with obviously date driven January to November 15th, order within and uh, you'll be able to be eligible for these rebates. Um, our rebate program is going to run through our plant products loyalty program. So it's a, uh, a bank account that basically accumulates money as the purchases uh, happen throughout the season. And these funds can be used for any, uh, any initiative on the golf course or just right off invoice. Um, obviously speak to your plant products representative, but uh, there's some nice new money here. So up to 8%. Um, so if you have a, uh, a golf club looking at uh, insignia deal for snow mold, um, plus using honor around those holiday weekends, as, as uh, Kyle just mentioned and as our team has mentioned, and then using Cadence first and last and Max Team in the summer, uh, you can get to these levels pretty quick. Uh, so this is all new money uh, in 2021, and we're looking forward to uh, helping you guys uh, save on your budget line. So again, uh, you'll see this program uh, promoted through our website. Uh, Twitter, um, through the sales reps. Any questions, please reach out to the sales reps and uh, ask because this is straight off of uh, the invoice. Um, next, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Starock. He's going to close out today's presentation uh, and uh, bring you guys all up to speed on uh, PureCo. So, Mike, go ahead. Thanks, Jay. And uh, yeah, thanks, Kyle. Good info. Nice. Uh see that portfolio with BSF grow and some nice tools for the guys. We'll uh, switch to your gears a little bit uh, in the fertilizer for those who don't know me, uh, maybe in the Ontario crew, I've uh, been with plant products for uh, eight or nine years now uh, and uh, coming from the golf course uh, side, worked in both uh, the GTA and Montreal uh, before ending up out here in Quebec. So um, nice having everybody on. Uh, I, I take the lead a little bit with plant products on our fertilizer portfolio. So we'll, chat a little bit about pure coat and controlled release fertilizers uh, in general um, to give you guys a little insight for anyone who's tried it uh, as Jay mentioned earlier we're in our second full season uh, with, a, with a third uh, a couple years ago doing some trial work but it's really been uh, outstanding up to date to have uh, new technology with frankly zero uh, quality issues uh, since day one so with that, we'll talk quickly about uh, who Purcell uh, Agritech is, uh, the Purcell family. Some of you might be aware of them back in the day uh, as the developers of uh, Polyon. Um, but I encourage you to hit their website. Uh, there is a great video kind of on the history of the Purcell family and the, and the different entities that they've, they've exist and, and leading up to what is now Purcell Agritech. They've really been a leader in slow release fertilizer uh, for turf and ornamental uh, for decades and had a hand in some developing from the earlier stages, uh, 
you know, polymer coated, sulfur coated urea, SCU, your methylene urea, et cetera. So uh, really a great story. Uh, people have been involved with uh, slow release fertilizer technologies uh, and now controlled release for, for years. Um, with that being said, like a bit of a review, but just a quick update as to what we're talking about here between uh, why, why slow release and controlled release, is there a difference? And, and there kind of is, so I, I kind of have a couple slides that I, I bring up to anybody who, uh, you know, just to get a sense of what we're using, what's in the bags that we're buying. And, uh, and if we start with our traditional fast release fertilizers, we'll call them, these are inorganic salts, um, soluble, you know, the fact, you know, we're a soluble company, plant products, and a leader in that space for, for long before I've been with the company. Um, so basically, if, it, if it's soluble in your tank, it means it's, it's immediately available to, uh, to the plants. So, you know, the ammonium sulfates, calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate, uh, these are the inorganic salts available within 24 hours, one to three week turf response, great in cooler weather um, because uh, they'll be available immediately to the plant. Uh, but you lose some longevity uh, and, you know, typically some a fear of uh, burn potential, a uh, uh, slightly higher salt index, which, which has to be taken into account because it is a soluble, but very, you know, useful, pro uh, useful items especially with the secondary benefits of, of calcium and secondary nutrients, if that's what you need uh, to get started in the spring. And we're all familiar with urea, uh, from the number one nitrogen source uh, used in turf, um, and which is, and, and agriculture, and, and this is available within a week. Uh, as soon as you put it down, has some foliar properties, which is nice, usually up to 50%, up to a tenth of a pound of what's applied can, can be uptaken foliar and turf. Turf being different than any other crop that we have to actually apply our fertilizer right on the plant, uh, so we got to keep that in mind. So that's a good, a good secondary benefit. And what's led to a lot of uh, uh, research into technologies and how to to better use that uh, going forward, which we'll get into here with Pure Coat. And then the, finally, in the fast release, uh, you know, CFIA and, and and every entity, you know, you get the stabilized ureas, and you can be careful. Very you know, environmental benefits. Uh, however, still a fast release fertilizer. Um, just be careful with claims that it's something that will last 12 to 14 weeks. That's just not the case. It really, it extends it about a week in terms of availability, and especially at the low rates we use in turf. Um, but a nice, a nice technology, but but still not considered a slow release fertilizer, as per any any uh, professional entity. Um, now we get into what was you know everyone's probably very familiar with the slow release sources started with sulfur coated urea, which didn't last long due to the fact that it, that, that sulfur coating cracks but probably before it even hits your the turf. So we were still applying straight urea. Um, so somebody came up and with the guys at Purcell, even back in the day, an, an idea of putting a protective coating around that. Uh, it's a quick and easy coating just to help protect that prill, that polymer coated, sulfur coated urea, XCU, Nutrion S has different brand names. But in general, that technology releases through a catastrophic release when the water enters the prill, solubilizes the urea, those prills it, it essentially explode. Um, and the the, de the, co the different coating thicknesses is what sort of gets you uh, some longevity as, like I said, it's a quick and dirty coating that's not as consistent. So your response is gonna be uh, good, extended, uh, but maybe not you know as consistent as we like. Usually you see a good surge in you know, 40, 45 days with a XCU type product. And we get into our uh, synthetic organics, uh, methylene urea, urea formaldehyde, um, originally the neutralines, nitroforms that everybody knows, uh, Methx40, um, which has been a bit of an improvement in reducing some of the the, uns the, the hot water insoluble portions of, of uh, methylene urea to get it closer into that 12 week period, uh, and our meso technologies that uh, we polymerize it with ammonium sulfate to get the advantage of both. You know, with organics, biostimulants, different things, making a comeback, you know, these methylene ureas, um, they are synthetic organics. They do feed microbial activity. So I think something that uh, maybe has been forgotten, not talked about a little bit, because when you get into traditional organic fertilizers, 100%, um, you know, they are typically slow release, not all of them, but the majority, but they're very unpredictable. So it's, it's difficult to ascertain exactly what you're getting. So a quick kind of review on the different bases of things and then what led into controlled release, it was basically fine tuning this. How can we get these these releases? Uh, so especially in fine, in fine turf maintenance that we, we wanna you know, max control growth. So we're, we're managing a game, uh, control how much uh, nitrogen we're giving to the plant at each time. So originally coming out with uh, 
it was a polyon. Uh, people don't know the history that was sold to the Agrium and then Coke, and then it's since changed hands again. Bit of a you know professional athlete kind of get moved around a little bit, but uh, Purcell at that time has developed a, a newer technology uh, called Pure Coat, and we'll discuss a little bit why that is different in general, and not to be too scientific. Um, similar uh, uses regardless of the type. Some are coated as a resin, and as it as it dries, it becomes a polymer. Others are a polymer right away. But for the most part, it's a prill, uh, you know, of urea or or other nutrients on the inside. Water passes through, solubilizes that material, and then based on temperature, that that material is released. Um, and so they all follow that similar characteristic. But then, what would make pure coat uh, different or uh, an improvement on what uh, what they've put out in the past? And, and what we're going to next. So um, they call it the next generation of polymer coated fertilizer, um, primarily due to the unique production process, the chemistry of the actual polymer used. So it can be a thinner and a more durable coating, uh, very consistent, predictable release, um, get us exactly what we want when we need it, and the ability for us to customize formulas and release profiles based on what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, the team over at Purcell, uh, you know, one gentleman in particular in charge of the production and, and a big part of the development team, uh, since the time of Polyon has had a hand in the, devel in the development of every single coating plant, um, just about every single coating plant in North America. Uh, he's, he's extremely familiar with what we were doing, and it wasn't just uh, the actual polymer, uh, but it was how they apply it and how good they are at applying it that is what can be made better than what was out there in the past making sure prills don't float away, that they're, they're fully coated. And when you're looking at a controlled release product, what you gotta, the things that affect its release uh, are start with the, the substrate surface, what you're coating, those, the, whether it's a, a nice round prill that you can get a consistent thickness, or it's a jagged granule, uh, which is much more difficult to do. So, you know, with Purcell and the majority of all controlled release, they wanna use a nice round prill uh, to make sure that that coating thickness is equal all the way through. Um, the particle size distribution, if you have a mix in, a, in regardless of the, the, the different types of facilities, uh, different SGN size, um, then you're going to have different thicknesses on each one. Um, so, you know, a, a mini prill or smaller prill is going to require, uh, you know, a different amount of time in the coating process than a regular SGN prill. And so if you have a wide range of mixes, that's a tough one to, to figure out. Coating porosity. Uh, and film thickness, and that's really what plays into uh, what's proprietary and the, the chemical characteristics of, of the, the polymers that are being used. Um, you know, thickness can only be done if you have a machine or ability to, to dial in that thickness to exactly what you want to get the release rates that you want. And the porosity at different temperatures is what's going to affect its release. So these are this is data that each of these companies really have to like nail down to make sure that they can give you what you want. And the last two. Uh, uh, temperature, handling, transport, anything in controlled release is should be, you know, dictated its release in this way, 15 degrees, 22 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius. Um, these pearls are in, are in water at those temperatures, and it tells you how, how long they release. And this can be adapted for, for the different uh, scenarios. In handling and transport, if that pearl is cracked or broken before it hits the ground, you're basically applying straight urea, so it has no effect. So for the the new process with with uh, pure code happened to be a six story tall facility, so they uh, their drop every batch they make they drop prills from six stories and make sure they don't crack on the concrete floor. So uh, you can be sure that uh, now that it's a more malleable, a softer coating, uh, it doesn't crack as much as some of the the older technologies. I don't like having too many uh, slides and graphs. Uh, you know, I think in these these avenues that they they can lead to some discussion, but one that I find very pertinent in what they were able to do is they they came up with the pure coat technology with challenge of themselves to say okay well we want to create um, three different coating thicknesses uh, uh, on urea and we're going to measure each one at different temperatures 15 22 and 30 and we want to match them up and based on their calculations and their ability to coat the the, the thickness that they want this is how close they were able to get with a two and a half percent, a three percent, and four percent coating at the three temperatures. So they've really dialed in their ability to give us exactly what we want when it comes to a controlled release urea or uh, any other nutrient product. So it's a nice demonstration of what they can do. And I don't 
not sure too many other manufacturers can do that. So that being said, how does it apply for us in our in the golf market and what is um, available or needed? How do we use it? Um, we've really got two typical longevities that that make the most sense for our climate in eastern Canada. Um, we call it the high coat and mid coat which you'll see uh, is going to give you with the high coat, you're looking at 120 days at 22 degrees Celsius and a mid coat in the 60 to 70 days at 22 degrees Celsius. These, these two technologies replace, uh, you know, in a two a one, two or three or four application program, like something with high coat uh, for a lot of guys now, uh, time, labor, uh, you know, one application in the rough is probably all you need for the season somewhere around mid-May. Um, you know, some best manage management practices include, you know, that, that sort of mid-end of May application, uh, just a wall-to-wall, -wall, fairways and rough, and you get that base up there. And then you know, those who have the ability to spray can supplement uh, fairways with some soluble fertilizer, maybe some surfactant wetting agents uh, while you're putting out fungicides. So it makes for a nice, clean, easy maintenance program that you can spoon feed to a sense, you know, maybe in a three week interval, but you have that base app done for the year and you're rough, not, you don't have to worry about it. Something to, to try for guys who aren't used to a, a longer release curve, like a high coat, um, but really uh, had outstanding success in the last few years. Now what we call our mid coat, uh, pure coat technology, you're looking at 60 to 70 days. Uh, for us in our turf pride brand of fertilizers, uh, mid coat is gonna replace 100% uh, all the polymer coated, sulfur coated urea in our blends. It really um, should replace it overall in the, in the industry due to a, a more consistent release and an extra week or two in between your application. So when a more traditional two, three, four app uh, program, depending on the percentage in the blend or if it's a straight product, we have a few examples of, of the, the, the blends that we include Bitcode in right now, but uh, we're really uh, just showing an outstanding improvement over traditional XCU, you know, we're trying to manage clippings, growth, and cutting. If we take a look here, you know, part of the value that uh, Purcell has of, of uh, in-depth knowledge of all the other technologies and testing that they do, we can see if we take something like mid-coat here in the purple curve and percent release, compared to an XCU, uh, you're really just getting that surge of clippings that you're chasing at application and then really tapered amount up and towards the end to that 40, 45 day space. So the mids coat's just gonna give you a little more consistent, a little less you know, surge growth, a little less waste uh, in early on in the application, and then taper off when you get out to that 60 day mark uh, on an average of 22 degrees Celsius. So you're always gonna keep that in mind uh, depending on what we're using, but for us, this is just a much more uh, encouraging curve for uh, the golf space and, and not having to chase grass uh, every time we put some fertilizer down. If we look at something uh, like the high coat, uh, very consistent, almost linear release, uh, which is ideal. You know, if you're depending on the rate from 1.3 to 1.8 pounds of nitrogen, you're going to literally feed a tenth of a pound of N per week to your turf. Um, which is which is a nice number. Anything more than that is really a waste, especially when you're talking bluegrass or rough. Uh, and and you could tweak that. I often suggest tweak that down a little bit for fairways as a base app, and then supplement with solubles, as I mentioned before. You know, for when you look into those, you know, ours being a 44, actually a 44.300. Um, we just don't uh, in Canada. CFIA doesn't want us to put the decimal places. Very thin coated, and in, in order to be able to get that, so you're going to get a higher percentage of nitrogen. Uh, for the release that you're getting. If you look at competitive products like a 4400 Polyon, um, you're, you're not going to get that same release as you are getting with high coat. Um, same thing with a duration, uh, even less, a 4400 duration. You know, so 1% by weight coating difference uh, with mid coat and duration are probably a little bit more similar. So be careful when you when you uh, use a few of them. Um, Surf coat, we actually sent these down for uh, testing last year. Every batch uh, we had, unfortunately, uh, they came back saying that they, the, the prills must be cracked because we were not able to get a solid re release curve with those products. So a nice way to uh, visualize what you're actually getting uh, with these these different controlled release products. You know, so uh, these type of talks, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know we're busy with a nice start of the season, but I hope it you know creates a dialogue for you to discuss 
with your uh, Plaid products rep in, in different locations. But you know, in a quick summary, we're getting you something that um, can help you save save some time and money uh, with the quality of the application you're using. You know, in a general sense, you can use up to 25% less nitrogen by using a more efficient source like Pure Coat. Um, and and I, I know as a super, and I started using CRFs uh, was just by trying it. Uh, pick a couple locations in your rough, tease, range tea, uh, give it a, give it a try. Um, speak to your rep about which blend or which straight product would work best for you. And uh, I think you'll find in one season that you'll 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 be able to find a program that helps you accomplish your goals and and provide good playing conditions at the same time. So that's all for me. I. Uh, I don't want to take too much longer than that. I want to thank everybody again for uh, coming online. I'll throw it quickly back to Jason to uh, take the floor. Well, I'm, I'm going to take over. It's Kelly DeVere. Uh, there were a few questions that popped in uh, sure. on the presentation. So I'll start with the, uh, the first one. Um, so the question was, using a fungicide for rooting or recovery seems like a non-label usage. Uh, Brad, hey, do you want to respond to that or answer that question? Sure. Yeah, thanks for the question. That's a good one. Um, here in Canada, they don't give out uh, too, too much in the way of plant health claims, even though we have plenty of data to support it. So you would never spray Honor or Insignia Duo on, uh, for, for just the plant health, right? So what you would probably want to do is use it as part of a preventative approach. And as a side benefit, you'll get those plant health benefits that Kyle was talking about. So it's a side benefit to what you're getting on the fungicide, um, the fungicide application. Thanks. Great. And the second question and the last question is, uh, um, somebody left some Maxtema out in his pesticide shed for one night. Um, his Maxtema became, became slushy. Is it still good to use? I'll uh, go back to Kyle Miller on that one, if you can answer, Kyle. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Just shake it up really well. And, uh, it, you know, if you're concerned about it, just do a quick jar test, um, put it in some water just to make sure that uh, it'll suspend like it normally would. So, uh, but yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. Just to confirm okay. that scenario, it, did, it, it was below freezing. Yeah, well, like I said too, you know, even though it gets below freezing, uh, that material wouldn't probably freeze till maybe uh, five degrees below uh, zero centigrade. And so because of that, you know, there's not as much concern as, it, as if it was water, for example. But the bottom line is if it did get a little thick, a little milkshakey, if you will, just shake it up really well and make sure that it, uh, you know, goes back into suspension like it normally would. Okay, great. That's it for the questions. I don't see any new ones popping up anywhere. So I think that's uh, that's the, the end of it. Jason, do you want to say some closing remarks? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to your plant products rep or the uh, newly added uh, Chris LaCour to the VSF team. Um, and I'd like to thank you all again and wish you all a successful 2021 growing season. Thanks very much.